I've been teasing this single task milling machine for weeks. Today's the day we build it. Since all of this is what's getting the rebuild, this has to come off first. Okay, I've chosen this location for the rail because I want the piece being cut to be on top of one of these bearings. And we'll just square it to the base plate, then we'll clamp it in place. Now it's square and it's clamped in place and I'm going to come in here with a transfer punch and mark where all these holes go. Now the transfer punch is only for leaving a mark, it is not a center punch. I say that every time, don't I? And there they are, my 12 transferred holes. Okay, now I'm ready to drill. It was about this time that the uh, microphone battery died and I didn't notice for several minutes. But, uh, you know, there's not really a lot of audio action going on here anyway. The base rails are installed now and we'll call that the x-axis. Now we need to build the platform upon which we will build the y-axis which will feed the stock into the cutter blade. And that's next. Now there are a lot of ways to locate these holes. But one way that works really well for me is to take the thing you, that has the holes in it, lay it on a copier, and take a photocopy of it. Now I made two copies of it, and then I uh, aligned them with the actual ends, and now I'm just going to center punch and drill. Now we need to locate the bearings of the y-axis and I'm just going to line up the edges with the edge and I want them right over the top of the x-axis slide bearings. We're just about ready to assemble the x-axis and this stuff has to go on in stages. For instance, this is the y-axis drive and this has to be mounted before this can be mounted onto the linear slides. And then that has to be done before these can be mounted onto this. Because these are in such a place that they will block the screws that attach the plate to the uh, um, x-axis slides. So first things first, bolt the y-axis drive onto the x-axis table. Now I've got the y-axis drive here and the y-axis bearings. Now on top of this I need to build the workpiece holder and the workpiece will be fed into the cutting head and then get uh, slid side to side to cut the slot. And uh, uh, the next step is just like we did before. I've got a photocopy at the top of the bearings. We will just glue that on in the right place, drill the holes, and that will give us a place to mount it. After that, we can build the fixture that will hold the stock in place. I've been pretty lucky so far that I haven't had to take this thing apart, put it back together, and, and take it apart again. Uh, but uh, I've, I've reached the end of that luck. Um, all the holes I drilled before matched up with the, the, the places they're supposed to go, including these on this plate. But uh, to get the location for this captive nut for the drive screw, I'm going to have to actually bolt this together, in install the drive screw, mark the holes, then I can drill and tap them. After that, I'm going to also have to build the fixture and the clamping assembly on top of this plate, and this, this will end up probably going on and coming back off at least three times during this process. Okay, so we, now we've got our x-axis and it's moving. We've got our y-axis with the drive hooked up. Let's test the drive. Okay, that's working too. 
Now we're very close. All we got to do is build the fixture that will hold the stock onto there and the clamping mechanism and then we can uh, align the cutter bit to all this and, uh, and test it out. Now the next step is to build the stock holding apparatus. This is the stock. It's a 3 8 inch aluminum tube and I've got this aluminum bar. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to drill a 3 8 inch hole into the bar and uh, cut that hole in half and then uh, that will make a perch that this will sit on. Then I'll make perches for these toggle clamps and that'll lock the workpiece into place so it can be fed into the milling cutter. I drilled part way into a couple of pieces of aluminum and then I cut them in half to make this saddle arrangement. Then uh, we'll come in here with a couple of toggle clamps to hold it in place and then we'll, move, we'll mount all of this onto the y-axis which will move it into the milling cutter and uh, cut the slot down the length of it. And the banana is for scale. Here's what I've come up with so far. This is the y-axis and the screw on the drive was just way too long so I cut off everything I didn't need. I came up with a uh, stock holder and the stock is meant to have a 3 32nd inch roll pin in the end of it and uh, because of that I put that roll pin in there to locate the stock into the fixture every time. Then we just throw down these toggle clamps and then uh, will guide the stock into the cutter blade which will be right here. So this much is done. Now I need to get over to the x-axis which is going to be driven off this. Um, it's going to be a, a gear reduction motor going around to slide this y, or to slide the x-axis side by side back and forth. Now the drive motor I'm going to use for the x-axis is a windshield wiper motor out of a 1990 Le Mans. Um, that just happened to be one that I found that I liked. It's got all metal transmission on it and uh, this is it. Uh, the output shaft hangs a little bit low so what I'm going to have to do is build a like a bridge trestle thing for it to rest on and then I can tie it in to the uh, uh, linkage there. So to make these rod ends so they're level, the bottom of this needs to be three and a half inches. So I need to make a bridge that'll elevate this whole... There's, these are my mounting areas, so I need to make a bridge that'll elevate the whole thing three and a half inches. Now that's not going to be too tough. And here's what I came up with. It's just a uh, inch and a quarter by eighth inch flat steel bent into a little perch. Got a gusset going on there for any side to side motion that may want to occur. I got this windshield wiper motor. It's a gear reduction motor and that is going to slide the x-axis side to side. And here it works. The y-axis goes in and out off this uh, gear reduction lead screw motor. I've got my uh, work piece holder in place. Now the last step is to install the spindle in place at the right height so it will cut the slot. One thing that's very cool about this is that <laughs> that is exactly two and a half inches of travel. I am very happy with the progress on this project. Uh, the way the linear bearings mounted up is just came together without a hitch. The way the tables uh, came together and tied together is perfect. Uh, the stock holding apparatus is exactly what I had envis envisioned in my mind. And if any of you follow me on over on Instagram, you will notice a distinct similarity between the, uh, the Fusion 360 model that I posted about three weeks ago and what I've actually created in real life. This is this is an excellent rendition um, of, of my original concept. So the only thing left to do mechanically is to uh, install this spindle and uh, it's, it's working pretty good. I cleaned it up pretty nicely. I shortened it a little bit uh, because it was a little bit too long for the application uh, now that I got rid of that milling vise and stuff. So I need to build a, a couple of blocks underneath it, about an inch and three quarters tall, and that will hoist this up to the appropriate level to cut the slot in the side of that tube. 
And uh, that's next. So we've got the x-axis motion and we've got the y-axis motion, but what we don't have is drive to the spindle. We have this 1750 RPM motor with a two and a quarter inch pulley on it, and then we've got a five and a quarter inch pulley here, and I did the math and I was thinking that this uh, spindle would be spinning around 4,000 RPM, except I did the math backwards. The big pulley needs to be on the motor to get that result. The way this is, is only going to give me uh, 750 RPM on the spindle, and that is nowhere near fast enough. It's got to be up around 4,000, preferably even faster, but I don't know if these pillow blocks will handle much faster. Anyway, I have ordered a 12-inch pulley for the motor that uh, should be here Sunday after release of this video. So just when I was making all that progress and feeling real great about it, I get stopped by a rookie mistake like that. Anyway, I ordered the new pulley, the bigger pulley for the drive side, and the appropriate belt to go with it, and hopefully the calculator I used will uh, give me the right size belt. And um, all that should be here um, Sunday or Monday. And uh, it turns out that uh, it won't be until next week until we get to see the thing actually work. Anyway, I've got a really great feeling about how this thing's going to work, and I can't wait to show you guys the job it does and, uh, and what that uh, tube with the slot cut in it is for, because uh, that's my next project. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.